So now, Champak Sadhu's daughter, Mohana, is landing and is getting his blessing. Last time she danced, she is also a Bharatanatyam dancer.
महाम्रेष्ठम मनुमी महाम्रेष्ठम तस्वरिपुरीमा गुरी गोष्ठवाटिम राधाकुंडम गिरीवर महो राधिकाधवा प्राप्त जश पृथ्वी कृपया तन्न तो वंशा कल्पतरो कृपा सिंधुव नमो महाबंदय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाजते गौरचंद्राय राधिकाये माय हार्ट की ओबिसेंस है जिन द लोटस स्ट्रीट ऑफ माय परमाराध्यतम निकलीला प्रवेश दोंग विष्णु बाद और सोता सी सिस्मर भक्ति प्राप्तियां के सब गुरुसामी महाराज गुरु पास पर एंड सेम इन द लोटस स्ट्रीट ऑफ माय शिक्षा गुरु निकलीला प्रवेश दोंग विष्णु बाद और सोता सी सिस्मर भक्ति बेजाम स्वामी मार्गियर संन्यासी ब्रह्मचारी वैष्णव वैष्णव ज्ञान यसर्डेन और श्रीमद भागवतम सप्ताह वे टोल दैट हाउ By the mercy of Guru Dev, even past the incarnation of Supreme Lord, he became satisfied and thus composed Sri Mad Bhagwat Samadhi Bhasha. In this connection, he also told his own history. To Vyas Dev, a guru tells his his own life life history to disciple that how can how I have attained for and for this he began to tell his previous past time. How he attained the Krishna Bhagwan? Achyuta Nanda, oh, Achyuta Nanda, so explain. ज्ञानाजनशलाकय चक्षुरुन्मील ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम जैसे प्रसाद भगवत प्रसाद यसादानगति कौपी ध्यान श्रुवांस श्रेयसस्त्री संध्या वंदे गुरु श्रीचरणारविंद फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मै ऑफ फ्रम मै मिलियन एंड मिलियन ऑफ दंडल प्रणाम अंत द लोटस फीट ऑफ my spiritual master rasik kul shiromani paramhams vaishnav bhagavad acharya madhya shri guru pad padma param aradhyatam om vishnu pad paramhams shri rajak acharya ashtotra shat shri shri mat bhakti vedam narayan goswami maharaj after that i offer my most again millions and millions dandavat pranam to the lotus feet of all sanyasi bhaktavrind 
and Brahmachari Bhaktivrind, also all Vaishnav Shrotakan. So, Srila Gurudev is asking me to uh, narrate the history of Vyasadeva and Narad Muni. Because Shasud Goswami has explained to Shona Kadirishi the theory, Shrindvatam Sokatha Krishna Punya Shavana Kirtana. This is explained in the second chapter. But what is the practical uh, execution of these slokas? So this we learn from Narada Muni, and he explains to Vyasthi. Actually, Chakvartipad writes in Sarat Darshani, Panchame Jnana Karmadir Vyartham Upapadayan Bhaktim Kirtan Mukhyanga Naradam Tam Upadishat. That in this Bhagavatam chapter, this fifth chapter, where this Sambhad is going on, that the uselessness of Gyan and Karma and the superiority of Bhakti and the highest form of Bhakti that is Hari Kirtan. So this is learned from the history of Sri Narada Muni. Narada Muni was in his previous life, he's telling to Vyasadeva that I was the son of a Dasi Putra. Meaning, I, I was the Dasi Putra. I was the son of a servant, a lady, maid servant. And she would used to serve the great devotees, Vedantas, Bhakti Vedantas. So one day he was they were they would be very merciful upon him. He was only five years old, maybe a little less than five, five years old, Pagod says. And so he would go to these Bhakti Vedantas in the month of Chaturmasya where they reside in solitude and perform Hari Bhajan to Bhagavan Sri Krishna. So he would hear from these Vaishnavas, these Bhakti Vedantas. And one day, by their mercy, but with their permission, he accepted a morsel of their Bhagavad Mahaprasad. And the moment he took this Mahaprasad, then at once all his sins were immediately eliminated and his heart became pure. And so, at that moment, he had, he was Bhagavan on Muk. He had the faith who was favorable to the devotees and he wanted to hear. Taste for this hearing of Harikatha developed within his heart. So by their mercy, these Bhakti Vedantas would tell Narad Muni that the sweet pastimes of Bhagavan Sri Krishna that are Manoharaha, these pastimes of Sri Krishna, immediately they enchant the mind. They steal your mind. So Narada Muni, hearing these pastimes, gradually, gradually, Tada Rajas Tamo Bhavas Kamalo That gradually his uh, influence, the influence of Rajagun and Tamagun, the modes of passion and ignorance, at once were uh, being removed, eliminated. And he realized that his attachment to this body and the subtle body were only a result of agyan, ignorance. So he would hear these pastimes, and they, these Bhakti Vedantas educated Narada Muni on the path of Bhagavad Bhajan. So at the end of Chandra Masya, these Bhakti Vedantas, they left. And Narada Muni was left. So then the sixth chapter begins, and Vyasadeva is inquiring to Narada Muni that what did you do after these Bhakti Vedantas left? So Narada Muni then explains that I was bound by my mother's affection, I was unable to leave. And so one day, by circumstance, the will of God, providence, Narada Muni's mother. She was milking a cow, and while she was milking the cow, then a snake at once came and bit her, and she left her body. So then Narada Muni realized that this is the mercy of the Lord, and he left his house. To, and he left and he went through so many places, small towns, villages, forests, dangerous forests, dangerous forests, 
and other places that were like uh, very opulent, so many beautiful places he also passed through. And gradually he came to one place and under a banyan tree he sat down and performed the uh, meditation as he was instructed from those Bhakti Vedantas. So then within his heart he was at once he meditated upon the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. And then what happened, Roman Chakambasu Karangapadu, he was immediately experiencing the Ashtasattvic puffs. His body was shaking, his words were faltering, hairs were standing on end. Because he was seeing within his heart the Supreme Lord. And then while he was in this uh, Ashtasattvic puffs, then his sporty of the Lord went away. And he woke up, he came out of his meditation. And he was very distressed because when you attain something that comes after so long and you lose that, then much, dis much distress is coming. So then he heard, Narada Muni heard, that, oh, Narada Muni, unfortunately, you will not be able to see me anymore in this lifetime. Because your sadhan is not yet complete. <laughs> so then, from that point on, Narada Muni he did Dandavad Param to the hearing this astral voice. And he went around chanting the holy names and the glories of the holy name. Gradually, he grew old and he attained perfection and he left his body. And then in the next creation, from Brahmaji, then he appeared as Brahmaji's son. And everywhere he goes with his veena and he's chanting the glories of the Lord. So then uh, Vyas told this pastime to, I mean Narada Muni told this to Vyas. And then, then Vyas uh, enters into Bhakti Yoga Samadhi. Bhakti Yogi Namanasi Samya Pranihi Temali Apasyat Purusham Puranam Mayan Chatadapashayam <coughs> Vyasadev, he sees entering in this Bhakti Yoga, by Bhakti Yoga, entering into his relationship with the Lord. In his yoga, in the relationship with Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he is seeing in his mind. And he is firmly, his mind is firmly attached in this bhakti yoga. And it is free, completely free from all uh, material contamination. So what he sees, what does he see in his dhyan? Bhakti, bhakti yoga dhyan, what does he see? Apasyat purusham puranam mayan cha tadapasyam He saw the poor purush, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. And under his control, he sees the Maya Shakti, both Yoga Maya, Maha Maya, and, but she is some distance far away from him. Because Maya Devi, uh, she, Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he is never in direct contact. Vyasadeva explains that the Supreme Lord is eternally, he is Swena, he is residing by his own will, and he is completely free from any contamination. So this is the uh, what Vyasadeva has seen. And then again, what else does he see? Yaya sammohito jivo atmanam trivanatmakam paropi munte nartham tatkritam chavi padyate That he sees the jivas. This is actually Jiva Goswami explains. This is the sambandha gyan. These next three verses explain what is sambandha. What is Abhidheya and what is Prayuta? So now Vyasadeva is explaining what is the Sambandha Gyan that the Jeev, by this Maya potency, which is under the uh, control of Bhagavan Sri Krishna, the Jeev is enchanted, deluded by this. Yayasa Mohito Jeevo. And Atmanam Trigunatmaka, he considers this body to be a product of the modes of material nature, which are a function of Mahamaya. But, Really, Paropi Manute Nartham Tatkritam Chavipatite, he is above these three modes. The Jiva is Sachidananda. But we are Anu, this is the difference. 
and Bhagawan is between them. Large and small. So, this is the Sambhaya <laughs> Hidden mystery in Narada Charitra. That Nar this Narada Rishi in his past previous life, he did a story teaching. And then <coughs> In a glance, for a glance, Narayan came in his and he gave darshan for a moment. And after that, he put his face on the head of death and now over whole world he began to. But we should know <coughs> There is a transcendental Narada, eternal knowledge, who is the associate of Krishna, Ram, Narayana. They are same. But this Narada, who does austerities and then he became perfect, he was ansa of Molle root narad. Like, for example, Parishit Maharaj asked Sukhdev Goswami, Kyuta Nanda Kim, in Nanda Kim Akarot, Brahman Shreya Evo Mahodam, Jasodacha Mahapapau Jasyasta. O oh, Rishi, what activities in previous life, what donation, what this he went, that Krishna became his son and Jasoda gave his first bill to Krishna, Supreme Lord. Then Sukadeva Goswami told him, oh, in previous life they were Dhrona and Dhara. And they did a story to Brahma. And they asked, Brahma asked that you should have a boon. And then Dhrona and Dhara, they told that Prima Bhakti should come in our heart. So, Jiva Goswami and other our Goswamis are telling that this Drona and Dhara really they become, they not become eternal Nanda Jasoda. They were part of that original eternal Jasoda and after that in Treta, in Dwapa, for the mixed in Nanda and Jasoda and enjoyed O oh, Premaras, Vatsalaras. So, we should know this. <coughs> After that, Sukhda Goswami began to ask um, Parichit and Parikram. Sukhdeva Goswami began to answer. He told about Bharata Rishi. You know Bharata. At that time, the age of the persons were about one lakh years. And he was the emperor of the whole world, universe, Bharat Maharaj. Very powerful. Now he has a very big 
family, his son, his daughter, his uh, grandson, grandson, and other grandson, so thousands. In fifty years age, he left them all as a human kid after his school passing, oh, he became dead. So he thought that this world is like a school and we should give up this world and be happy forever. And thus giving up all, he went to forest. And there he began to do very hard stories, mantra jab. And after that, what became? Can you? You are not ready. Then? Go ahead. You can then. then. Oh. Oh, you? I want that he should speak on Prahlad You? Oh, yes. <laughs> So before beginning, we first offer our most humble heart cultivation. Unto the lotus feet of our beloved Guru Devs. Unto Sri Guru Parapadma Nityalila Pavishta. Om Vishnu Padasno Tarasati Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shri Prabhupada and unto Sri Guru Parapadma Om Vishnu Padasno Tarasati Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Swami Maharaj and all the assembled Sadhasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. So Sri Guru Dev has ordered me to speak on the story of Bharat Maharaj taking up from the time when he has now left home, entered into the forest, and has begun his austerities. As he said, he was performing very rigorous and rigid austerities. He would bathe regularly in the morning, he would rise, he would perform uh, chanting of mantras of the Rig Veda to Surya, to Narayan, and throughout the day performing, uh, gathering various ingredients for fire yagya, uh, chanting mantras, uh, very, very deep meditation and deep concentration. It's described in Srimad Bhagavatam that after some time he began to experience very elevated symptoms of ecstasy. Uh, even the uh, astasattvika bhavs, hair standing on end, all of the symptoms, preliminary symptoms of someone who has attained the stage of bhava, very elevated in his sadhana. Now this is important to understand because Srimad Bhagavatam, it speaks Mostly when we think of Srimad Bhagavatam, we think, oh, these are the pastimes, the glories of the Supreme Lord in his various incarnations. But if you look and analyze, actually, Srimad Bhagavatam is a description of the devotees of the Lord as well. And the main message for us is to understand and follow their example, their practice, their sadhana, and even their ups and their downs. And the experience of Bharat Maharaj is highly instructional. Because just as he was at this very elevated stage, one day when he was by the river performing his ablutions, there was a, a pregnant female deer drinking water very happily at that place. All of a sudden from the forest came a loud roar of a lion. <laughs> Sorry about the little noise. <laughs> the pregnant deer. <laughs> The pregnant deer became frightened, and in her great fright, she leaped across the river. The violence of that motion caused the baby within her womb to fall out into the water. The mother, stumbling onto the other side, out of fright, out of uh, trauma, fell down on the spot and died. Meanwhile, the young baby doe was floating down the river, struggling. Bharat Maharaj at that time was at the river, and he saw that doe. One of the qualities of a devotee is naturally compassionate. So his natural compassion, he reached out and gathered in this baby deer 
and took her or took him into her, his arms and carried him to his ashram and then began to care for him. Because Bharadwaj was also previously a Chatriya, and the Dharma of the Chatriya is to protect and nurture all of the citizens. So even though a devotee, a transcendentalist, will be completely detached and confident that Krishna will maintain and protect all living entities and will be detached from all of this, nevertheless Bharadwaj was having some material compassion on this small baby. And little baby deers are so cute. If anyone has ever seen a baby deer, one time I went to a petting zoo in San Francisco and was a little baby deer. I put my finger through the cage and it was licking my finger so cute. So Bart Maharaj naturally <laughs> developed affection. And the deer saw him as a father. And everything that he did, the deer was constantly pay, uh, uh, interrupting, following him. And very quickly, Bharadwaj's concentration on his meditation began to waver. And rather than meditating on the Lord during his meditation, he began to meditate upon the deer. Sometimes when he would try to become serious and do his yajna, the deer would come up and butt him with his little horns and lick him and he would push him away and the deer would sit down in mon and Bar would look over him and he began to feel that that deer was like his son, like his own son. One day the deer went missing and Bharadwaj went into the mood of madness and he began to chant, looking here and there, where is the deer? And he even called him, O oh, Prince, you whose footprints have been uh, made the earth most fortunate. You are so auspicious. And he was looking everywhere for the deer in separation, worrying, I'm supposed to be its protector. It came to me for shelter. I can't do it. It's out in the forest, maybe being hunted by some animal. His mind completely gone from his former meditations. So, at that time, he also died. And dying, the last thing he was thinking about was this deer. And so, by the law of birth and rebirth, what he was meditating on, he took birth as a deer himself. But, there's a very important point. Because his bhakti had been so strong and he had attained such a high level, when he was born into the body of this deer, he had full remembrance of his previous life. And he had full remembrance of his own accomplishment and attainment. And so very quickly, leaving his own mother, he went to his own former place uh, in Hardwar of meditation and began to associate there and live nearby the saintly persons there. And there's another point about this. Now he was associated with saintly persons, hearing with them, performing austerities, when he was Bharat Maharaj performing his lonely uh, 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 saga, he was alone. He did not have association. So even someone on this very elevated stage, without constant high level association, can be vulnerable to fall down. That is why we, in the association of devotees, we very much depend upon one another and the association and guidance of our guru and senior devotees. Because even if Bharat Maharaj can fall from that position, what to speak of us? This is one of the lessons there, very important lesson. So, he spent his life in this near body, meditating and thinking how he had wasted his life. But, then very quickly he gave up this near body. And his eagerness was so intense while he was in that near body, that it promoted him again into his next life, into the body of Judd Bharat. Judd Bharat was born into the family of a very high class Brahmin family. Uh, this Brahmin had two wives, he was the son of the second wife, he had nine stepbrothers. They were all highly qualified Brahmins, uh, by culture, by practice, by renunciation and knowledge, but they were not devotees. And so, learning the lesson from his previous life, he said, now I will only do that which is favorable for my bhakti. And I will not engage in anything worldly. Previously I became attached to a deer, now I will become attached to nothing. So he deliberately acted as if he were deaf, dumb, and even blind. Even though he was the most intelligent and highly realized personality, he acted as if he were a dumb, moronic person. And thus no one would care for him. His father spent a great deal of time trying to train him unsuccessfully, because he would not learn the lessons. 
and thus whatever anyone would ask him to do, some simple labor, he would sometimes do it wrong, sometimes inappropriately, they all thought he was a, a fool. So soon after that his father died. His brothers, his stepbrothers, didn't care for him, and they fed him scraps from the table, they gave him menial tasks, they mistreated him in so many ways, but he didn't care for any of it. Because all of this for him was external. His only purpose now was his internal medication on the Lord. Nothing would break that. And that is the next lesson for us. That if we really want to advance in our bhakti, this is the kind of one-pointedness we have to have. Not caring for anything external, only that our sadhan not be disturbed. So he continued in this way. One day, his brothers put him to guard a field. Because at night, the fields of the farmers are attacked by wild animals. They eat the food, they eat the grains, they eat the vegetables. So his job was to sit there and guard it. A group of Dakoids who had desired to do Kali Puja, they were looking for a man animal to sacrifice. This is a concocted form of worship of Kali where they take, instead of an animal to sacrifice, they take a, a well-built, healthy-looking young person and they sacrifice them. Believe it or not, this goes on even to this day in South India, this same practice. They'll take a retarded, slow person, sell them, and they'll sacrifice drink the, or offer the blood to Kali as some liquor. So they took Chakarat. And Chakarat, he was completely detached. And he went along with this, they tied him up, they took him to the place of sacrifice, they bathed him, they clothed him nicely, they fed him in a very nice meal, they gave him tilak decoration, and then they prepared him to chop off his head. They took a very sharp sword, they were all very gleeful, the person rears back, offering uh, homage and honor to Kali. Now we will sacrifice this mad animal for your pleasure. But Kali, who is Kali? Kali is one of the expansions of Durga, Parvati, the consort of Lord Shiva, who is an expansion of who? Lakshmi, ultimate Radharani. And they were seeing, she was seeing, this is a devotee of my Lord. And they're going to kill him? She burst out of the form of the deity, took the chopper, and started slashing off the heads of these dark ones. Chop, chop, chop! And it's very messy. All of her associates appeared, and they began to take the blood from these people, drink it very joyously like liquor, throw the heads around and play and, and dance. And they had a grand party. Uh, football. <laughs> so, but Chakarat, he was completely detached. Whether the Lord would take this body or protect him. Is this not one of the symptoms of bhakti? Raksha shita divishla shodvokritvevaranantata. Complete dependence on the mercy of the Lord, he will protect me under all circumstances, and he will maintain me. Or he will do as he likes. It's his body. And this should be our mood as well. And all of our forms of seva not needing to struggle so hard for our maintenance, for our wealth. We don't need two houses, we don't need a giant 50,000 square foot mansion. We can concentrate on simple living, high thinking. Krishna will maintain us, our bhajan is the most important thing. Then he was wandering again, and then one day the king came, King Rahumana. He was on a large palanquin, and he had many, many carriers. But one of the palanquin carriers had hurt his foot, they needed another one. The pelican carrier saw, oh, there's a strong young man, grab him. So they took him and they engaged him in pelican carrying. But Jagarat was a devotee. The other pelican carriers were not. They were just carrying, stomping around, stomping on anything in the way. They didn't care. But Jagarat was, every few steps, he was stopping. Oh, there's ants, and he would move around. A devotee does not disturb the life of any other living entity. This is one of the qualities of a devotee, compassion for everyone. So he would stop move this way, that way, and this way the palaquin was becoming disturbed. So after some time, Rahugana began to chastise him. Who are you? You fool? You think you're, you, you know, oh, you must be so tired. You've carried this palaquin all by yourself. You're so stout and strong, no one's helping you. Surely you must be tired. And he began to chastise him. Still, this inability to carry it went on. Then he chastised him very severely. He got down and said, you know who I am? I'm the king. You know what I can do to you? And there, very peacefully, Jagmarat, out of his mercy, with no offense taken, began to instruct him in touch the nature of the soul and how we are not this body. 
and in chastising him in a very sweet way, he began to instruct Rahugana Maharaj in the fact that you are not this body, you are not a king, I am not a palanquin carrier, these are all transformations of the material energy which we are falsely identifying with. And then Maharaj Rahugana said, well how can that be? You know, you're saying that none of this is true, all of this is illusion, but still, just as if when there's rice in the pot and water in the pot, when you heat it, the rice and the water, they also get hot. So when things happen to this body, the mind becomes disturbed, the soul becomes disturbed. How can you say that the soul is not affected by all these things? Okay? And isn't that our position also? We want to be devotees, but we feel the disturbances of this world. We become distracted by them, we become overcome by them. But Jan Bharat continued to give him instruction. Maharaj Rukhana said, I can't understand it. You keep telling me this over and over, but I have no realization. So then Jan Bharat gave him the most important instruction. He said, only by smearing oneself with the dust from the body of a self-realized Vaishnava can one understand these transcendental truths. Only by that association and hearing from that quality of person will any of this make sense. So, we are embarking this week on the most wonderful opportunity. We are all the Maharaj Rahuganas and less. We've come to hear from the self-realized Rusty Vaishnava. By this process, we can attain the realization that's required to prosecute and to perform our bhakti nicely. So with respect and honor and enthusiasm and eagerness, let us take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to hear from our beloved Guru Dev, this beautiful Sri Mahabharata. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. In Bhakt life also there is something hidden mystery. He, Maharaj Bharat, left his wife, his son, grandsons and grandsons, his kingdom, position, everything and alone went in forest. And when he was dying, he was remembering that tear. And as a result of that, he himself in the next life, he became dear. What is the meaning? He became dear. But if anyone in his last time, at the time of days, he will remember Krishna and the associates of Krishna. Krishna, Nanda Jasoda. Krishna, Siddham Subal Madhumangal Sarha. And Gopis, Srimati Radhika Chandrauli Dalita and others. Especially, in our parampara, if Rup Manjari, the service to offer Rup Manjari to Srimati Radhika and Krishna, if anyone remember at that time, what will become very wonderful. Next life, he will be gopi. He will be either Sakha, Either he will be Bhatsalas Nanda Jasoda like or he may be gopis or among gopis they will be under the guidance of Rup Manjari, Rati Manjari. But how it can be very rare. Our all Goswami in Parampara, in Astakaliya Lila, they used to remember 
meditate all these Ashtakaliya Leela that at the time of death is to come in our heart. But what we are doing, for what the, the process, in this process it will not come. Gradually hearing and giving importance to bhakti, especially Raganuga bhakti, as they have qualification, and after that, Astakaliya Lila, and then in the time of the will come. So, make a goal of your life. Give more time gradually. Don't give your mostly time in sense gratification, eating, drinking and sleeping. Hmm? And be married, no. Mostly. You know that at the, uh, at the time of death you cannot take a penny even with you. Take dhamri bhi. A dhamri bhi, shadam bhi nahi leka Isliye, isi prakar se jivan ne baat karo. In any how, maintain your life and keep your whole energy to obtain your goal. After that, Parikshit Maharaj told that, O oh Prabhu, when Krishna killed Chedi Sisupal, when a light came from the body of Sisupal, and it was mixed in the feet of Lord Krishna. How wonderful this! Very wonderful. Lacks and lacks. Birth and after birth and death. Very rare any yogi or Brahmacani. Even very rare. They receive this highest, high position. But how a virgin Krishna? And it began. And why Krishna takes the side of Bhakta, not Devata, not Demi, Demi, uh, Demons? Always Supreme Lord as Nishingh Dev as, or Barah Dev, Kurma Dev, Vishi, that he has taken side of demigods, not side of why partiality. And then he began to tell the history of Prabhu Lord Maharaj. Krishna Supreme Lord is equal to all. Not he is inclined to partiality, partial to demigods or impartial to demons. When Satvam is highest, then Devata, demigods, oh, they defeat demons. And when Tamasik, Tamas comes, then demi, uh, demons, they defeat. No perceptions here at all. In this connection, I am going to tell you one story. And began to tell the story that when Paradev killed Hiranyaksha, the brother of Hiranyakasipu, then his dead body was brought to palace and there was clay and a white cloth was covered his body. All their people, his son, daughters, family, others, all their people. Though 
Hrinya Kasipu, Gaiman, not ordinary Gaiman. A very powerful day. But he knows all Ved, Shastra, Upanishad. But does not follow. But know everything. This is the no. This is the symptom. This is the symptom of demons. They know everything. Raman, all Vedas he used to, but he did against it. He is a demon. So when the dead body was brought, all were living. Here in Nagasakur, mother, father, sons, so many sons, all their people. Then Here in Nagasakur told them, why you are waiting? He is killed in battlefield. He will go to heaven. And can you tell those who have what? He will not die? No example. Except with the information of Supreme Lord. All has to come and again to God. So naturally we see that he is dead, uh, he is dead. Why you to be? Don't be. Then he began to tell that you should know. Also you should also know. We are not body. We are part parcel of Supreme Lord. We are so soul does not God. No birth, no death. The birth and death only for body. So for why body? Anyone kill or not, one day it will go to ashes or it will go to grave and insect will eat and make tulu. This is the end of the body. So why do I? Oh, there was a king in Nelson. And his name was Sujakya. He, he wanted to make the emperor of the whole world. And he came in a battle with a, his equal party king. And in this battle, Sujakya was killed. And thus his body was brought to Royal Palace, covered with white trees. All were meeting. There were none to console or pacify anyone. All meeting. Then in the meantime, the deity of death, Jamaraj, came in the form of five years old boy, naked. And he began to ask there, why you are with him? Why with him? No one was answered. In the end, any old person told, Oh, you are why you should go to play? You cannot understand. He told that I, but I am understanding all you not understanding. <coughs> why with him? Tell Oh, he, he has gun in Hindi or Sanskrit. Hmm. Oh, chala gaya. Where went? He has gone to Los Angeles, Houston, Houston. Where he has gone? And when he will come? No Prabhu. He had, this body is here, but soul has gone, and for soul we are living. 
Oh, very good thing. If you are waiting for soul, have you seen that soul was golden, golden color, black color, how much long, how healthy or lean and thin? Can you tell? We have not seen. Then why do you think you have not seen? And if you are waiting for this body, body is here, you can wash, you can talk with him. Oh, anyhow, all will have to give up this body one day. At a, at, at a time, mm, once there was a pair of pigeons, Jamraj is told him. Pigeons, one day, they went to forest to pick up some grain or anything to feed their children and for themselves. In the forest, in a green land, on the tree, they were both sitting. And next it there, Bees. 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 They are loving each other. As a wife and husband, not how uh, 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 wife and husband, but uh, beloved and lover and beloved. <laughs> Boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> friend. Oh, very. They were absorbed in that. And in the meantime, she began saw in the grass there are some species of rice as if they are as a moti. Like pearls. Like pearls. Five pearls. She told his husband, no, oh, let us see how beautiful rice species are there. We should go and take it for us and for our children. First man told, don't go there. Here in forest, there are no business persons who sells grain and then no any householders or no farm. How it can come? I think that must be a trap given by a hunter. Don't go. But she told that all men always paranoid. So they think like this. And she pulled and she went fly there and began to pick up. The hunter was hiding himself and, uh, in a, behind a tree, very black person, very tall, very cruel. And she at once pulled the, pulled the string 